Hello there, it's Wednesday the 17th of April 2013. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk. My name's Chris Reardon. I'm very pleased that the uh, live show that we do now on Friday is uh, coming along very nicely. Although we've uh, found a bit of a problem with the online advertising. Now, uh, the system I use for doing the live show is called Ustream. You can... Uh, and, and one of the things that comes with a free account is that you have to accept the fact that there's going to be advertising to it. Now, I wasn't quite sure how this worked, but um, according to those of you that were with us last Friday um, for the last uh, 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 live show, what happens is that the the, andoms, the the adverts suddenly appear at ran sort of within the show itself. It's not like a banner at the bottom or anything like that. Oh, hang on. It's got to push some buttons in. Let me just switch that on there. <clears throat> yeah, it's not like a banner at the bottom. It's, it's like a full ad, like what you would see on the television or something like that. And it just comes on suddenly. Now, I thought what happens is that my show is paused and then the ad plays and then it picks up from wherever but that doesn't it doesn't work like that apparently what seems to happen is that it just will suddenly cut away from me and then rejoin it and you miss part of the show so i'm looking into if there's another way of doing this you can i can go with the same company you stream ad free but you have to pay now I, I generally i don't mind paying for things you know if they're reasonable but we're looking at 99 dollars a month which would be about 60 or 70 quid a month which i think is excessive i wouldn't I, I probably would have paid about 20 or 30 quid a month maybe you know 30 or 40 dollars a month but not not 60 or 70 quid you know 99 dollars a month and that was for the basic package um so we're looking at uh, other ways of doing this uh one of the uh, uh, methods could be possibly ustream uh, sorry youtube I gather there is a way of doing it live on YouTube now, so I'm going to have a look into that, and uh, I shall let you know. Meanwhile, as I say, um, Saturday's now show is now recorded on Friday, OK? So we do a live recording on Friday, which you can also listen or watch or both, you know, as it's been recorded, and join in on Skype or by telephone. Best way to find out whether it's going to be on or on is to subscribe to uh, my Facebook page, Chris Reardon UK. All right, so it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's my, that is the right one, isn't it? I'm sure it is. Oh, hang on a minute. I can, do you know, I can never remember because there's so many different names for, because you can't have the same name for everything. There are obviously another few Chris Reardons in the world. Um, and, you know, whoever gets the, thing first i suppose that's how it works so let me just check i've got that right i'm, I'm always getting this wrong so what is it what facebook oh, dot com forward slash chris reardon uk that's it isn't it yes facebook.com forward slash chris Reardon. best way to do is have a look on there on friday morning and it will tell you where to go or indeed uh, go to the Twitter either, and the same Twitter, Chris Reed in UK, and that, there'll be a link there to say where the live show is going to be, and it happens at 10.30 UK time on Friday mornings, OK? At the moment, we're stick with Ustream, but I'm kind of ex I think we're going to stick with Ustream. At the moment, we're experimenting with uh, YouTube to see how that, if that comes off uh, all right as well. OK, a uh, few emails in the show today. Um, one other thing I've done recently is I've turned my answer phones off, both on my mobile phone and also on my home phone. I'm sick to death of people, companies ringing up, trying to sell things, which actually I don't get that much of anymore because I'm registered with this thing called a telephone preference service, which seems to cut most of the calls out, but not all of them. Um, certainly... Companies that you may have an interest with, uh, perhaps you're a member of, I don't know, um, Virgin Gymnasiums or something like that, you know, and they will ring you up. They've already got your phone number and, and, and they, they ring you up. Oh, we just wanted to um, inquire about the survey. Would you like to do a survey? No, I don't want to do a bloody survey. I'm sick to death of doing surveys. Every time you buy something, you get an email through now. Would you like to complete this survey? No, I wouldn't. I'm fed up doing surveys. Besides, you never take any notice. You know, how many times have you done a survey 
And somewhere within that survey, it will say, do you think we are giving value for money? And I always tick no, you're too expensive. The price doesn't come down. It never comes down. You know, and no, no one ever follows it up. Why did you say that? Because you're too bloody expensive. That's why. Don't be telling me, you know, and, and you know that that you're, that that this is the market rate or anything like that. And then two weeks later, announce how much profits you made, gleefully. <laughs> you know, so I don't bother doing surveys or anything like that. I also used to get badgered a lot by the dentist. I don't mind a reminder call, but they go on, and I haven't been to the dentist for over a year now. I won't go anymore because the last two fillings have been um, so sensitive for weeks and weeks afterwards, and I thought, I don't want that again, so I don't go anymore. I keep my teeth very clean. White teeth. White teeth. I do keep my teeth very clean, but I won't go to the dentist anymore. Um... And one of the reasons I won't go to this particular dentist is because they badgered me. You know, they would ring up and you wouldn't ring back, obviously. They would ring up, they would ring up, they would ring up, they would ring up. Until you got that, they got that appointment. I, I don't want it anymore. There's another one who's ringing at the moment. The people, the electricity people. They keep ringing up to change the meter. There's nothing wrong with the meter I've got. I don't want people in here. Do you know what I mean? Changing, going on my wires and things like that. No, just stop bloody ringing me. T two or three times a day it was going on for a while. For a while. You know, and, and no one ever actually speaks. Like So you can hear it's a call centre. And what they do, they wait to the end of the answer phone message that you've got on your answer machine, right? And then you hear a little bit of background noise, which is the call centre. And then they click something, and then... They play you a recording telling you to ring an 0845 number. 45 pence a minute or whatever that is. I ain't going to do it. The other thing is, now you can't leave a message either because I've turned off my answer phones. People pestering you on the phone all the time. Can't do that anymore because I've turned off the answer phones. Even if I do answer, I don't answer with, with, with not withdrawn numbers, or what are they called? Withheld numbers. And I don't answer blocked numbers. And this, this is not, this is the fault of all these companies that continually badger people and pester them all the time. It's got to the stage now where I don't answer the phone. How ridiculous is that? You may think I'm being stupid. Indeed, it might be a bit more difficult now for family to contact me, but I can always look at the phone and see uh, perhaps my sister's called or my friend's called or something like that, and I'll give them a ring back. Problem is, and you know, of course, my name will come up when they see me. I do send my number when I'm calling people. But we're getting to the point now where it's actually going to be difficult to contact people. I don't believe I'm the only one that doesn't answer with held numbers, block numbers, and turned off their answer phones. No one can leave me a message anymore. What do you think of that? Maybe you've done the same. Do let us know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Do you think I'm just being silly? So I just pick up the phone and when they start wittering on, just put it down. I've done, I do that. I do that sometimes. They get on my bloody nerves, don't they, you? Play them at their own game. Turn the answer phone off. They can ring as many times as they want now, and they won't bother me at all. They sit there. Some, some clever arsehole will probably come back to say, oh, it's their job. Oh, whatever. Whatever. We'll get a proper job then. Sitting there in your call centres, pestering people all the time, pissing us all off. We've had enough of it. Answer phones, off. Withheld and blocked numbers, not taken. So now you won't be able to contact me at all. And it's your own fault. It's your own fault, companies. It really is. No more badgering. What do you think of that? Let us know, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Great to see The Voice on Saturday night. Uh, the Voice is like a, a talent show. And it's people have said it's like the BBC's answer to the X Factor. I don't think it's like the X Factor at all. The Voice absolutely appears, at least from the viewer's end, it does appear to treat its contestants, its singers, with some degree of respect. 
It really does. Even when they have someone there who's a bit out of tune, okay, the, what the voice seems to do is they, 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 they sieve out all the really bad ones, okay? I'd probably be one of those, to be honest. They sift out all the bad ones, so you don't actually see them on the television at all. Uh, by the time you've seen them on the telly, they're the sort of reasonable ones. Some are absolutely outstanding, some are not so good. There's no one really that's really, really bad. However, those that don't get through, they don't then slate them on the program. They give them constructive criticism, whether it might be something like, how old are you? They might say 16 or 17. Well, you've got a little bit of learning to go yet. Work a little bit on your voice. Come back in a couple of years. That's the sort of degree of criticism that they give. Constructive criticism. I have yet to hear anyone slated on there. And that's why I like it. The four judges... You've got uh, Danny, uh, Danny, or oh, what's his name? Is it Danny O'Donoghue? Might be, a da I know it's Danny something from the script. You've got Tom Jones, Welsh legend. You've got Jesse J, singer. And Will I Am, very talented and very funny and a real character. I love Will I Am. I think it's fantastic. And they're there in those chairs and they suddenly swing around. And they say to the people, you know, yes or no, whatever, you know, as, as the chair swings around. If the chairs don't swing around, that means that person hasn't been picked. And they finish a song and then all the chairs come around. And then they tell them why they haven't been picked. But they're not nasty. With the X Factor, the judges there are just downright bloody rude. And I have never liked the format. Never liked the format at all. I don't like the way the judges sometimes sit there and they scowl at them or they make stupid faces like, oh, God, look at this one now. That sort of thing. I don't like that. I'm sorry. And they're very blunt. Very blunt. You know exactly what I mean. So in, in my mind... The Voice is a far, far superior programme to The X Factor. Sometimes people on my karaoke nights, people who are, shall we say, karaoke singers. OK, I am a karaoke singer. I'm no better than that. I know that. But there are some karaoke singers who are good karaoke singers but do have these thoughts about being big stars and they come up and tell me they're going to be on the X Factor or they've got so far through on the X Factor and I'm afraid I have to say to them, well, you know, I hate to say this, but I'm not impressed that you're going on the X Factor because if they don't like you, they will absolutely slate you. Now, so do you see what I'm saying here? That person who may come once or twice to a karaoke night, regularly possibly, and have a good time. And they go up there, sing the song, and the people in a venue will generally give them a good run for their money. You know, a bit of applause, a bit of cheering, but as a karaoke singer. And then they might go on something like The X Factor, do the same thing, which was perfectly good for a pub, but isn't so good on a big stage. And the X Factor judges will slate them. How do you think that people feel, or that person would feel after that? Taken right down. Possibly depressed. We don't see all that on the telly. These people are not thick-skinned, thick-skinned, hardened individuals, as I think I am. You know, over the years, I've not been short of the occasional email or something like that telling me how bad I am. doesn't bother me in the slightest. I just delete it and carry on. Because I love doing this. You know, what I do here is not a um, a mainstream television show for millions of people. It's just a few of us. But that's okay. 
I accept that. I know where I fit in. So it doesn't bother me. But these people on the X Factor are not. They are not hardened individuals who would look at something for, oh, you know, just tear it up and move on. I can do that. They probably can't. So all that time they've been doing karaoke singing or whatever, singing in a pub, they've got on the X Factor and been absolutely slated by four people who quite possibly they adore. They've watched the X Factor and they, they value the opinions of these people. And then they're on there, slated, and then they go away. How do you think they feel after that? Maybe they stop singing. Maybe that little, little bit of enjoyment of their lives, they won't carry on doing anymore. And I think that's very sad. And that's why I don't like the X Factor. Yes, I'll dip in and out of it occasionally. But I won't watch it properly. Whereas the voice, you know, they've got so far... You know, probably, I, I, I don't know how the how the bit works before we see them on the television. Presumably they go to some sort of audition and they get a letter in the post. Thank you. My guess is it will say something like, thank you very much for your audition, but you're not quite what we're looking for at the moment. I think that's acceptable. I think something like that is acceptable. But to go on, to go on a stage in front of four people who quite possibly you really respect only to be slated in front of the millions of people that watch it and and of course the audience in the um audition things if presumably they're still doing it that way this year i i it's not for me what do you think let us know the email address is chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk right how are we doing let's do some emails boys and girls hello to lovely wendy Wendy is my fanalo friend. We we only started talking this year, didn't we, Wendy? After Wendy saw my um, uh, photographs of the wonderful Manilow concert, uh, the Barry Manilow concert that I saw in uh, New York this year. And um, do you remember? Was it the last? Show? Yeah, it was last Wednesday show where I was, I was chatting away, I was chatting away about something. Can't even remember what it was now. And then halfway through the concert, I just completely lost the thread of what I was saying. I find that quite worrying, really. Is that, is that early Alzheimer's? <laughs> and I, I don't say that in jest at all. It's very worrying, dear. Wendy says, I lose a thread of what I'm saying all the time, Chris. It's called a getting old moment. Well, I hope it's only a moment, Wendy. I don't want that to carry on, my dear. Thank you, Wendy. Nice of you. Wendy joins us for our live show as well, don't you? Don't forget the live show is on Friday mornings. 10.30 UK time, all right? If you go to, um, actually, you can probably go to the main United Kingdom Talk website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and just look at the, 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 the show at the top there, which will be this one, and um, it will tell you where the live show is on Friday mornings at 10.30, okay? Hello to lovely Suko, lovely, lovely Suko, who I did say... Um, when I left New York, that we would try and keep in contact with Skype, but I never see you on there, Suko. I never see you on Skype. Be lovely to talk to you again, my darling. Suko uh, is is a dear, dear friend of mine in in New York, and um, she found the United Kingdom talk show just when we were just doing the audio version quite some time ago. And uh, we've kept in contact ever since, and I've met her a couple of times once she came over here uh, with her lovely family, her husband, Jerry, and her beautiful daughter, Jade. And they came over here, and uh, I went over there in New York for the Manilo concert, and at the same time went to see Suko and her family. And actually, uh, visiting Suko was more the highlight, it ended up being more the highlight of my little break. Uh, although I loved the Manilow concert, I really enjoyed seeing Suka. Although it was so cold, Suka. Except the day I came to your house. That wasn't cold, was it? I remember, <laughs> it was quite funny, really. Because I, I, she told me to meet at this train station. And I got off the train. And then I, I, I suddenly realised, because it was freezing cold. This is the beginning of February. It was freezing cold. But 
where this station is, I think it was Rock, Rockville, Rockville or something like that, uh, where this station was on one side, the sun was beating down. And I simply just went round there and I thought, OK, well, I'll, I'll just wait here. It'll probably turn up here. There were two sides to the station, you know, the front and the back. So I went round the front and I sat down and the sun was just straight on me. And after three or four days of really bitterly cold winds there, I thought, that's nice. And I just sat in the sun. And I actually was sitting there in an hour in the end. Because what happened is that Jerry was supposed to be picking me up. He was waiting on the other side. <laughs> and we didn't see each other. It was literally... 20 yards away from me, but whereas I was around the front and he was around, the, I even went, walked around the station a couple of times and he didn't see me and I didn't see him. So I ended up sitting in the sun for an hour, but I wasn't complaining because after that it was lovely and toasty and warm. Anyway, I do keep in contact. I'm trying to keep in contact with Suko. So I keep an eye out for you on the, um, on the uh, Skype there, Suko. And uh, Suko sends in an email. Dear Chris, I had to laugh when I heard you so excited about scanning your groceries. Yes, uh, we do self... I, I go to Waitrose for most of my shopping now because we've got a new Waitrose opened in Bracknell. I say no, it's been there about a year now. There's also one in Wokingham as well. And um, we do self-scanning. You have a little scanner thing. Do -do -do -do, and you go around the shop, you scan your item and put it straight in your shopping bag. Right? Then when you get to the special cash-out thing, you simply hand over your scanner... Um, put your bags on the thing there, you hand over your money and you go. Now and again, they rescan your items to check that you're not nicking anything. All right? And that's how it works. And it's, and it's marvellous. And you've got this little gun. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, it's wonderful, 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 wonderful. So that's what that's about. Suko says, it's refreshing that you take pleasure in the little things in life. It's not a little thing. It's a wonderful piece of technology, this is, Suko. Scanning your own items like that. I just hope you had a better experience than I have. I never wanted to scan because I like to interact with people. But Jade wanted to do it, so we signed up for it. I must admit I was so excited about it myself the first time. Problem number one. The product aisle. Do you have to scan every piece of fruit, every peach, every grape? Not to worry. You simply go to the computerised scale, weigh the item, and then try and match the item up with pictures with uh, to pictures with barcodes. That's right. Yeah, that's what we do. Now you mustn't confuse Macintosh apples with foodies or regular peaches with organic. They have different price points. Time-consuming questions. Annoying. Yeah, you know, I... I actually, yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Because, yes, the different, different brands of apples and that are different prices, aren't they? So you've got to work out which is which. There must be an awful lot of mistakes made. Or, or certain unscrupulous people putting through the cheaper apples as more expensive ones but then of course if you were doing that you would always run the risk of being caught on the rescan you don't want to be caught dear can you imagine the embarrassment at the till when the woman behind there who are always very pleasant announces in a loud voice you've put through the expensive apples as cheap ones madam <gasps> Can you imagine the embarrassment, dear? Problem two. If you're as absent-minded as me, you forget whether or not you scanned an item that you threw in your cart. You can scan it again at your own risk, or you can check the scanner for a list of the items scanned, which is confusing and takes time. Oh, it doesn't for me, because the last, last item scanned is always at the bottom of the little screen on the scanner. Unless you've put a few more items in and then suddenly remembered, oh, hang on a minute, did I, did I, do, the, did I do the beans or not? Is, it, is that what you mean? Do try and keep up with everything, Suko, dear. My nerves are on edge. Problem number three. Do you know how long it takes to scan 18 cans of cat food? This sucks. It takes me twice as long as checking out with a human. I figured it was the first time it would take some time to get used to using it. 
didn't get any easier the second time and third times. The fourth time, I felt I was finally getting the hang of it. I felt so proud. What's that beeping noise? Why is the store employee rushing over? It's the dreaded random scan. <gasps> she got the random scan. They took everything out of my bags and re-scanned every item to make sure I was doing it honestly. Honestly, I was scared. I think I would be, actually, Suko. You know, the moment you get that rescan, you, 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 you probably, like me, will have honestly think that you've scanned everything properly and put it in the bag. What if you've made a mistake? <gasps> so you suddenly see something there that you haven't scanned. And it comes up on the rescan. <sighs> oh my God, I would just die. Wouldn't you? Suko says, not that I wasn't an honest scanner, but what would happen if I made a mistake in my favour? Would I be arrested on the spot? Turns out I did make a mistake in their favour. I scanned 20 cans of cat food but only had 18 in the cart. $1.30 in their favour. Suppose I made a similar mistake every time I shopped. Since I do a big shopping once a week, I would have lost $57.60. That's a fair amount. I could buy a nice pair of shoes for that price. Nope, I like the old way of doing things, fast and efficient, or maybe not. You never know. Depends who you get on the till, doesn't it? Depends who you get on the till, my dear. You get that miserable young girl. She don't even want to be there, does she? They're not very much of a pleasure to talk to. If I go to the till, I like to go to an elderly lady. They're always full of fun and chatty. That's what we like. That's what we like. Suko carries on to say, no April Fools, pranks or practical jokes played on me or anyone this year. But last year, Cyber John got me good on his show. And she attached a clip which I listened to. It seems that young Dallas, who writes to you, has a similar taste in music as myself. I love the 80s, especially 80s British pop like Duran Duran, Tears for Tears, Psychedelic Furs, Howard Jones, The Thompson Twins, The Cure, The Fix, etc. And as you know, Snow Patrol is my Barry Manilow. I follow their every move and have seen them in concert numerous times and have met them several times. Dallas can check out Suko Live from New York Facebook page to see pictures of me with the band and she might like to listen to my show on Mixcloud. I play at least one Snow Patrol song, some she's probably never heard of and lots of 80s rock. The link to it is, are you ready for this? If you want to hear one of Suko's shows, www.mixcloud.com forward slash Suko Sullivan. OK, once again, you want to have a little listen, listen, little listen to Suko's show, www.mixcloud.com forward slash Suko Sullivan, all one word, S-U-K-O-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N. By the way, Jade loves the 80s music too. And as you know, Chris, One Direction. I, I took her a little picture of One Direction when I went over there. She has the picture you bought her hanging in her room now. Well, enough for this email. Love you from Suko. Thank you, Suko. Nice to hear from you, my dear. Please try and keep an eye out for me on the, uh, on the, um, oh, what do you call it? On the Skype. On the Skype. Hello to David, who I haven't heard from from ages and ages. Hello, David. Um, I was talking about visually implied and, uh, sorry, visu visually impaired and blind. Is that the same thing? David writes in from Boulder, Colorado. Hello, Chris. It's been a long while since I've written in. There is a way to parse the difference between visually impaired and blindness. And David is severely visually impaired, meaning that he's got less than 1% of his original eyesight. 
Think of visual impairment as a sliding scale of decreased function. I interpret blindness as a complete loss of the function. In the UK, I remember a guy calling it partially sighted for visual impairment. I don't think these terms were made up for the sake of being politically correct, rather to better identify someone's condition in relation to their disability. There are hundreds of different conditions which have countless variations on visual visual activity and severity. For those who don't know, know me, I tend to use the generic term blind when they see my guide, guide dog or a white cane. If someone who asks about my vision, I, si- I, I explain that I'm severely visually impaired. I can see a little from once I was able to see 2080 when I was 17. Ironically enough, I listened to a program on BBC Radio 4 that is fairly recent, designed exclusively for the blind visually impaired. It's called In Touch News for Blind People. So I haven't heard that. Probably available as a podcast as well, anyone who's uh, uh, got problems seeing. All right, so listen, have a look for that. BBC Radio 4 uh, programme called In Touch News for Blind People. The programme discusses topics of interest or potential impacts on the blind community in the UK. And that's from Dave in Boulder, Colorado. So thank you very much. Nice to hear from you, David. It's been a very long time. Have you been with us all this time and you're just keeping quiet? Eh? Be more vocal. We need more vocalists. Sort of, if you see what I mean. One more email then uh, from James and then we'll do the answers to the uh, little maths uh, maths thing that I told you about on the last Saturday's show. James says, hi, Chris. You mentioned Margaret Thatcher. To be honest, I never agreed with all of her policies, but I would never make nasty comments about her now she's dead. It's disrespectful, and secondly, she is no longer here to defend herself. Second point about Margaret is there are talks about having a statue of her put up in public. I don't think it's a good idea. Firstly, it will be vandalised, and I hear the tax paper payer is going to pay for the statue which is not a good idea if it's going to be vandalized it's going to cost a lot in a time when a government is supposed to be cutting costs hope this doesn't sound horrible actually no i don't think it does sound horrible you know i um i was and indeed am a great fan of margaret thatcher i thought she was fantastic but a statue put up by someone who it could be said was very divisive. I mean, a lot of people rowing, I've been listening to them, those that like her, those that dislike her, to put up a statue, I think you're absolutely right. That statue will, no doubt in my mind, be vandalised. I think, I think it will be, so I'm not sure that's a good idea either. James says, glad your nephew passed his motorcycle test and has many good years driving. Oh, he also, guess what happened today, actually? He got a phone call today. Uh, Sorry, he had an interview at a college he's trying to get into, and he has been accepted to go into college. So I'm very proud of my nephew, Jimmy. He's 16 now. Very, very proud indeed of my nephew. And uh, he's going to college to do car body work. He wants to fix cars, which would be very handy for the family, to be honest. It's funny, actually, my sister rang up and told me. I said, well, that's handy. You can do the mirror on my car, because the mirror on my car, the plastic bit on the back got all scraped when I got a bit too close to the garage. It's not damaged the car, just the plastic bit on the back. And when I inquired on how much one would be to... Re- they wanted £70. You know, this is £70 for a piece of plastic, basically. And I'm not going to pay it. I thought the price would be... £45. I'd just about pay that. I'm not going to pay £75 for a piece of plastic. So when he's ready, he can do that little job. The funny thing is, I'll probably pay him more than the 75 just because he's my nephew. But I don't mind, you know, because that would be money I would give him anyway. So at least I'm getting something for it now. <laughs> anyway, so he's into uh, college now as well. 
You also mentioned this parking ticket on your car that wasn't yours. This is not the first time I've heard this type of crime. I've heard that some people have received fines in the post for people that clearly don't live at that address, and a person that does live at that address has had a lot of trouble trying to sort it out. Surely people dodging fines must realise the law will catch up with them sooner or later. It's madness. Also, if people pay these fines that are not theirs, they need to be more careful as there's many ways of getting stung now. Yes, I got, so I got this. I don't think I've got it with me here. Yes, yeah, there it is. Got this um, parking fine from Camden Council attached to my window screen. And when I read it, it wasn't my car. It's not my car. It's not the colour of my car. It's not the street where I parked it. And it's not the time where I parked. So someone's put this on. We think someone's put this on my car in the hope that I'll just pay it and not read the rest of the ticket. Thus, basically paying their fine. Not me. I don't miss a trick, thank you. By the way, I'm trying to keep my head up today because my dear, dear niece has kindly reminded me that every time I tip my head forward, you do see the bald spot quite badly. So I'm trying to keep that. Thanks very much, Tracy, for that. I do appreciate that. Tracy, my niece, does like to point out all my faults for me. She's very kind like that. <laughs> You were talking about privatisation. The only industry that has really got better from it is the telephone and internet industry. Technology has come on in leaps and bounds. Oh yes, by the way, they've uh, the Ver I'm with Virgin Media. They have just upped my speed to 120 meg down and 10 meg up. So that's great news. Uh, the 10 meg up is quite important to me because obviously when I do these video shows, um, I send up. You know, it takes a while to send up. So that's the f that that would be quite a big, big speed for me to go up now at 10 meg. Um, James says, as you can make a call virtually anywhere in the world, any time and at a cheap rate. People have often told me that if you make a call abroad years ago, you had to book it first at a certain time as the phone space was limited. Yes, that's what I was telling you on the last sh uh, the show before last, wasn't it? When we used to have that. Uh, call to Australia once a year on Boxing Day it would be booked. So that's one good change. And who would have thought that the internet and mobile phones would catch on like they have? You think, I mean, what, internet? Ten, did I have internet ten years ago? I don't think I did. You know what, I wonder how long I've had the internet now. Maybe a little bit longer. Or 15. Certainly there was no internet around... 1990. We didn't have internet then, did we? Even the internet on the move is taking off. As for the other industries privatised its uh, profits before services to people like trains and gas and electricity and water. Years of underinvestment, but charges still rise. And I think it's too late to stop the problem, I'm afraid. Hope you get better soon with the cough. Oh, it's gone now. The cough's gone now. I hope Katie is doing well. I haven't heard her protesting outside the studio lately from James. That's because she's usually asleep, curled up on the bed. Yeah. And she knows my bedtimes. If I don't go to bed at a certain time for my afternoon nap, she, she'll find me and start meowing till it's time to go to bed, Chris. Seriously. Honestly. Uh, the thing with those mobile phones and that... For, thank you, James, for the email. Always appreciated. Um... James, I was going to say to you, did you send another email in? I get this feeling I've lost one of your emails. Hang on, what's that on the, on the printer? Right? What's that there? Oh, yes, I've got to read that out as well. I don't know if I've lost one of your emails. I think I've read them all out. If I've lost one, could you resend it for us? Um, yes, this, this, this 4G. We've got 4G now here in the UK. And um, the... Mobile company arm with Orange, or EE, whatever it's called now, is the most ridiculous name, isn't it? It doesn't flow at all, does it? Who ever thought of renaming Orange and T-Mobile EE? It just doesn't... Do you know what I mean? You know, you need a recognisable, easy-flowing company name. McDonald's. John Lewis. Waitrose. Asda, Argos, British Gas, Southern Electric, EE. Do you know 
do, do you see what I mean? It just, for me, it just doesn't work that. That logo, a name of the company, just doesn't work for me. E -E. Anyway, so they've got 4G now and they keep, keep writing. See the posters everywhere, telling everyone, you know, go on 3G. But they want another £5 a month for it. I mean, how fast do you want it to go? I've got to be honest, when I'm on my little mobile, my iPhone, only I mean, iPhone 5, when I go on the internet of 3G, it seems fast enough to me. How fast do you want it to go? I don't mind them upgrading for free. I'm not paying another £5 a month for a bit more speed. It just seems pointless. I wonder what the figures are for for the sign up to that as well do you think many people have signed up for 4g don't know do you know perhaps you know have you got it in america 4g yet anyone know the figures for the 4g take up in the uk someone look them up and let us know okay email address chris at united kingdom talk .co uk uh, finally today little email from gary now gary's the one that pointed out i was sitting on a leather chair after I sat there and said the other day that I wouldn't buy anything leather, and I still won't, and and I did explain to him, well, I've had the chair now 13 years, you know, what do you want me to do, chuck it out? I won't chuck it out until it's falling apart, which I don't think it ever will, actually. It's very well made. I got this from Ikea many, many years ago now. Um, third, actually, I think it's about 15 years old this year. Um, but if it does ever fall apart, rest assured, it will be replaced by a vinyl chair, Okay. And Gary says, try Blip TV, Chris. You'll get a new chair from the advert share. I've come, advert share. I know what you mean, but I am actually on Blip TV. Jeff, did you know that? Or Gary? I'm on Blip TV. And uh, if you subscribe to iTunes, because you can subscribe, subscribe to this show from iTunes, either the audio show or the video show, if you subscribe to the video show on iTunes, that comes from Blip TV. So I'm already there, dear. But as for, ad as for advertising share, uh, I don't think so. Do you, I mean, do you know how many how many viewers you've got to have for that? I don't think they'd be interested in my 20 or 30. <laughs> you've got to have thousands for that. I'm never going to have thousands of people watching this. Just, just a few select people. That's how it is. That's it from the show today, boys and girls. Oh, no, hang on a minute. The answers, the answers. OK, so here's the answers to the questions I was asking you on Friday when we were doing that thing about um, a 15-year-old doing GCSE maths, testing their financial skills. We, th we asked for you three questions. Number one, Cat paid £1,500 for a car in April 2009. In the first year, the value of the car depreciated by 10%. In the second year, it, dev it devalued by 15%. How much can Cat sell the car for in 2011? And the answer is £1,147.50. And that was worked out by uh, 1,500 times 0 0.9 in brackets times 0 0.85. I'm still none, none the wiser, to be honest, how that works. <laughs> I mean, I can sit here giving you the answers, but I'm not, I couldn't do it myself. Number two, Hassan has paid £17,465 a year. His personal tax allowance is £6,475 per year. A, what is his taxable income every month? And I think I probably got that one right. And the taxable income would be... Nine hundred and fifteen pounds eighty three pence. That says it's worked out by doing seventeen thousand four hundred and sixty five minus six thousand four hundred and seventy five and divide that by twelve. So that would so that would be the monthly. They didn't say monthly though, did they? Oh yes, they did. Yes, yes, they did. So I would have got that wrong because I gave you the answer in annual, didn't I? I gave it. So, of course, you've got to divide it by 12. Of course. Yeah. See, it's so important to read the question properly. Often I don't do that. I don't read things properly. And uh, B, if Hassan's income is taxed at 22 percent, how much income tax does Hassan pay in a year? And the answer to that was two thousand four hundred and seventeen pounds and 80 pence. All right. There was one more question. 
Lorna wants to buy four peppers. She will not use more than four. The prices for peppers are as follows. Pack of three peppers, £1.40. One pepper, 59 pence. Special offer. Buy one pack of three, get a second pack at half price. What is the most cost-effective option for Lorna? You must show working to support your answer. Well, the answer is four peppers individually would cost four times 59 pence, which is £2.36. One multi-pack of three plus one individual pepper would cost £1.40 plus 59 pence, which is £1.99. Buying two packs with the second at half price is £1.40 plus 70, which equals £2.10. So the most cost-effective option is to buy a multi-pack and an individual pepper. Now, did you follow that? Because there are actually another... Another six, quest six or seven questions. Do you want those? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> oh, I hate maths. I really hate maths because I'm so crap at it. That's why, probably. I'm not too bad. At least I got that la I would have got that last question right. Is that it, then? There we are. We're done for today. Thanks so much for watching and listening to the show. Don't forget, uh, we do do a live show on Friday, which becomes Saturday's recorded show. If you'd like to join us for that, uh, do join us on Friday morning at 10.30. How can you watch that? Simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, look at the top show there, and that will tell you where to find us. All right. If we've moved from Ustream, it will say up there. Alternatively, of course, I always put updates on my Facebook wall, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You become a friend on there and you'll see the updates there. And of course, on Twitter as well with my Twitter username, uh, username Chris Reardon UK. I'll see you uh, on Friday for Friday's live show, if not on Saturday for the recorded one. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye bye now.